Hi! In this video, let's explore the environments functionality in Zoho Create. Environments in Creator provide separate modes for development, testing and deploying applications. It allows you to tailor your app in a development environment, perform thorough testing of the changes and then seamlessly publish them to the live application. This method ensures a safe and smooth transition when deploying alterations to the existing live app. It proves particularly beneficial for complex applications, preventing errors that might occur due to dependencies of workflows or functionalities within the application. To utilize environments for the applications in your account, you must enable them. Environments in Creator consist three modes. Development, Stage, Production. The application development and testing happens in the first two modes and the live app can be accessed by the end users after it's published to the production stage. Apps without environments enabled are automatically considered to be in the production environment. This implies that any modifications made to these applications will immediately affect the live application, impacting the end user who is using the application. To understand this better, consider an order management app that requires the addition of multiple new workflows and forms. Let's include this app in the environments and modify the functionalities, test it and then publish the changes. Meanwhile, the end users can continue to use the live application. Adding an application to the environment can be done in two ways. From the app dashboard or from the environments. After an app is added to the environment, it gets listed here. These are the three modes, development, stage and production. The development mode is where you can build and modify the app. The ability to edit the app is only applicable in the development mode. Following that, we have the stage mode for thorough testing and accessing the functionality of newly added or modified features. Finally, we have the production mode where the app is published to the users for their use. Now, we'll quickly go through adding a few functionalities to the app in the development mode. To save time, we'll fast forward these activities. Let's add a feedback form to the app to collect customer feedback regarding the order. Let's add a global variable to store the company name. Next, let's create a workflow to send a success email after the customer has submitted the feedback form. Let's include the company name in the content using the global variable. Finally, create an assigned permission set for the customers. After adding the functionalities, the text Changes Available will be displayed under the application name which indicates that the app has undergone modification. You can access the application immediately within the development environment to view the recently incorporated changes. The mode in which we view the live app will be indicated next to the app name. By clicking on the settings, you gain access to setting up, viewing and managing demo users, notifications, variables and workflow schedules for the application. By introducing demo users into the environments, you can preview how the app will appear to users with diverse roles and permissions. The roles and permissions listed here are the ones we added to the app previously. The demo users count depends on the subscribe plan. There are 10 predefined demo users included in the plan. 5 in the developer mode and 5 in the stage mode. Moving to the notifications tab, you will find a variety of options for managing email, SMS and push notifications in the application development mode. It allows you to configure the notifications sent while testing the application. You could notify different users such as the logged in user, specific user from the app 
or the user email address mentioned in the application workflow. No emails will be sent if you choose the disable emails option. SMS notifications can be disabled or sent to the phone number defined in the workflow. Lastly, the push notifications work similar to the mail notification we discussed earlier. The Variables tab exhibits the list of global variables configured within the app. It displays the name of the variable, the value assigned to it and the current values of variables. The last tab lets you choose how the workflow schedules should occur during development. You can either suspend all the schedules or allow the enable schedules to occur as specified in the workflow. All these attributes are applicable only within the development mode of the application. Next, within the logs menu, all actions such as form submissions, schedules, email data and integrations made in an application are systematically recorded with a timestamp. They are recorded for statistical, security and debugging purposes. This is a newly added app to the environment. Let's look at the logs of another app that was added to the environment a few days back. Here we have an extensive information of different actions performed in the application along with the timestamps. We incorporated additional features to the application in development mode. The next step involves testing the application with the made changes. Stage is where we conduct extensive testing on the application before publishing it to end users. Let's move ahead and publish the changes to the stage environment. To do that, click on the publish button and choose the option for publishing to the stage. Select the application and proceed to the next step. Now, you may select the components you want to push live. The components to which we made changes will show an indication here. In our case, let's push all the components. Next, provide a title and description for the version. Select the type of update, whether it's a minor or a major one. Depending on the update type, the version number will be adjusted accordingly. For a minor upgrade, the version number after the dot will be updated and for a major upgrade, the version number before the dot will be updated. You also get the option to notify a user before they publish. With these steps, our publish to stage is now initiated. The application will be locked and be under maintenance until the publishing is complete. You won't be able to perform any actions during this period. This restriction applies only to the stage version of the app. The app in the production mode, the live app, will still be accessible to the users. Please note that only one publishing process can take place at a time from any of your apps within an account. Once it's complete, the new version number along with the date it was published will be displayed on the stage. Once you have published a version to the stage or production, it cannot be reverted. For any further modification, you need to edit in developer mode and then publish the app to stage mode once again. This results in creating multiple versions of the app across different modes. Now, let's access the app to conduct extensive user testing in the stage environment until we are confident about the app's functionality after the changes. The email has been sent according to the workflow. In case you find any bugs, you need to get back to the development mode to make changes to the application. Accessing the editor will take you back directly to the developer mode. Moving on to the settings, the menu remains consistent with what we observed in the development settings. Here, you can manage demo users, notifications, variables and workflow schedules that would be applicable only to the stage mode of the application. The logs here is similar to the logs option we discussed earlier in the development mode. Following thorough testing and confirming the app's smooth operation, the subsequent step is to publish the app for end users. Production mode, also known as the live app, is where the real-time business users or customers will have access to the application. Proceed to push the application to the production. Click on the publish button and choose to publish it to the production. Select the version and proceed. You have the option to publish the app immediately or schedule it for later by specifying the date, time and time zone. Include the email IDs of users you wish to notify and hit publish. The application is now live with the recent updates. Let's verify if the app works fine with the newly added functionalities. The changes we made, such as adding a new form, creating a workflow including a global variable and creating permissions are all available on the live app. 
Therefore, the use of environments in Zoho Creator streamlines application development process by offering structured modes for development, testing and production. That's all for this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to learn more about Zoho Creator and press the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video releases. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in another video.